Hello and welcome to the Work for Change podcast. My name is Jean, spelled like Jean. I am without my brother for this intro, but don't worry, I'll keep it short. We have a great podcast coming up. We interviewed Simply Mander on YouTube and Instagram, also known as Manders, Amanda Marie, the many ways that she's known, and it was a great interview, and I'm really excited for you guys to hear it. We talk about so much from mental health to physical health to coaching um, to muscle and steroids. It went everywhere, but it was a lot of fun, and I really think it's a conversation that you guys are going to enjoy. So I just want to say... Thank you so much for listening to episode 41 of the Work for Change podcast. Thank you guys so much for your continual support of this podcast. And let's jump right into today's episode. So this is this is an interview we've been wanting to do for a while. It's weird to even call it an interview because we're all friends, you know. Um, Yeah. We met. So it's funny. The way that I actually found you was through my brother. Um, When Really? Yeah. So when I first started doing CrossFit, like what I do with anything, I've talked about this on the podcast before. Whenever I get into something, I look up YouTube videos about it, right? It's just what I do. I like to immerse myself <laughs> for some reason. Like, yeah. uh, so the first, like he told me to watch like Craig Ritchie and then he said you. And I was like, okay. He was like, yeah, it's a, it's a girl, but you know, like you might, you might like it. You might. It was like, not like that. Hold on. Yeah. Is he it? was like, he was like, it's a girl. <laughs> it's not yeah. as cool. Easy like there. It Easy. Was re- I was like, gee, that's a little. A little harsh, dude, but you know what? I'm very open to anything, okay, you know? Okay. John's not. Like, mm-hmm. I'm very open and, my, like, you know, I accept everybody. Uh, <laughs> but but he, he, like, told me about a couple of vloggers because that's what I asked him. I was like, Is there, are there any YouTube vloggers? And you were one of the – there was there was not that many. There still isn't that many CrossFit vloggers. Well, now there's a good amount of games athletes that vlog, which is cool. Um, but – and so – and that's how I started watching your videos was literally because John was like – you should check her out. And I literally just Googled CrossFit vlogs. Yep. And that's how I found Craig and you. And this was like years ago. Yeah. Like this was like Funny. three years ago yeah. or whatever. Well, I was going to say because you, John, followed me on YouTube. Like when I had like 20 subscribers, no joke, because I remember always seeing your comments in the comment section. Cause like back then I barely got any comments. And I, the reason I started my YouTube was for that exact reason. I was like, man, there is no like just regular old life craft style vlogs. Like, yeah, there's games athletes, but like not all of us are games athletes, you know? And I was like, there's just not like a real life CrossFit style vlog out there. And that was what kind of inspired me to start it. So I remember I used to get so pumped when you would comment on my videos. I was like, yes, I'm doing it good. That must be good. Yeah, I was so excited about that. Yeah. So that's kind of what kind of segues into what we wanted to talk about. So when you, when you first started YouTube was like, was it because you wanted to make CrossFit style videos or were you starting for another reason? Like what kind of led you into being like, I'm going to make YouTube videos about fitness or was it not that, was that not it? Or was it, yeah, I'm going to make videos about something else. And then it turned into, can I be a creeper actually for oh, a second? Gosh. Yeah. Um, You're a creeper always. No, I told you we've been watching. So we've been watching your video. I've been watching your videos for like three years. You started oh my gosh. about that time ago. Right. Yep. And I, yep. what I like to do is when I'm feeling kind of like how oh, do my videos gosh. pair up to other people's like, style wise um i like to look at their first videos because i'm like where did they start with (laughs) and it gives me hope (laughs) but you you did say something like it was like you were starting a fitness channel and you had one before that right like did you have a youtube channel before simply mander no i didn't have a youtube channel i had a tumblr back in the day Tumblr blogs were like the cool thing to have it wasn't like you could record videos and i think Maybe at the time I may have done that, like using my like MacBook computer, you know, when, like to discuss things. But it wasn't a vlog and it wasn't on YouTube. It was literally just on Tumblr. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. I didn't know if yeah. it was like, so I didn't I, know if you had like a makeup vlog and then you're like, you know what? I'm going to go to uh, no. fitness or that's, something. So that's actually what Jean did. He used to have a makeup <laughs> I a, channel. I had a great makeup <laughs> vlog. And then I switched to makeup fitness. Makeup tutorial. Yeah. The, the reason Jean wants to bring this up is because his old videos are absolutely, I think you've privated all of them, haven't you? I have. They're bad. Oh my gosh. They're really bad. He, so he, I, they're, I mind some of them. they're so atrocious. Jean has a v- whole video that it was about why he loves Chipotle so much. Do you still have, is that one you privated? I've privated that one for sure. I've like, (laughs) I've like screenshotted it and then like, or screen recorded it and put it in more recent videos. Like, dude, we all start somewhere. 
But no, it's definitely private. It is someone cannot just stumble yeah. upon that video uh -huh. anymore. Uh, one one video we recorded for your channel. Remember when the like stuff people say trend was a big thing? Yeah, we recorded a, yes. a stuff baristas say because we both worked at at Starbucks. That video oh, actually did okay, right, right for your channel. Yeah, for my like when I had like twenty subscribers. I that was a good video. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was fun. Yeah. Is that one privated too? I think I kept that one. Nice. Um, okay. So back to you. Back to you. Um, I guess we could talk about you still. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, where where does your fitness journey and your YouTube journey like collide? And then like what was that process like? So um, in 2013, like early 2013, my whole thing after I was done with college the first time, I <laughs> thought I was going to be a cop for the rest of my life. I was like police officer, criminal justice major, like that was my whole life. And so back then when I was working for a police department at the time, I was like, man, I was so, I was so small. Like, I mean, granted in the grand scheme of things, I am a small human, but like back then I was even smaller, like just super duper skinny, never worked out a day in my life. And I was like, man, if I want to do this, like for real, I have to be like strong, you know? And so I started at Gold's Gym and initially back then I had, it was just like Instagram. Like I was just posting my little like bodybuilding. Like I thought I was so cool. You know, <laughs> like it was, it was like just, I didn't, I didn't, wasn't doing it to like start a fitness journey, Instagram or anything like that. It was just cause I was doing it and it was like this new part of my life. And you know, I thought it was really cool. I was starting at the police department, whatever. Well, then I was really bored by bodybuilding and I was like, man, there's got to be something else. Like that. I hate this. <laughs> and I I just, it just didn't you. suit me. It just, yeah, I just, I didn't love it. And so I was like, okay, what else can I do? And so then I started doing research. I came across on Tumblr. Actually, I came, I'll never forget this. I came across a picture of Christmas Abbott. She was the first CrossFit girl that I've ever seen. And I was like, okay, what does she do? You know, like she's super strong, you know? So then I found out about CrossFit and I started CrossFit in 2014, I think it was. And I just, I tried like two or three different gyms and I was so scared. Like I've told this story on multiple podcasts. I feel like if anyone knows me, they're going to be like, oh, here we go with the story again. <laughs> well, I want to hear it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, uh, so I was really nervous cause you know, like anxiety life and I was so scared and I pulled into the parking lot, my first CrossFit gym. And at the time I pulled in, they had been finishing a workout prior and like all these super jacked guys with their shirts off, they came out like drink bells were doing farmer carries with no shirts on. And I was like, I can't do this. And I literally drove away. I was like, I'm not doing it. <laughs> and I did it three times before going in because I was so scared. Wow. So I start, yeah, I started there, but I didn't start vlogging until probably like six or eight months after that, because that was when I, like you, John, I was like, okay, I want to like find other people that do this because I want to watch videos on YouTube and I want to see like their lifestyle, not, you know, celebrities, but just normal people that do CrossFit and that have jobs. And at the time I was a shift worker. So I worked six at night till six in the morning still trying to do CrossFit and compete and all that stuff. So I was looking for YouTube and I didn't find any. And so that was what inspired me to start my own. And I did that in, I think it was 2014, late 2014 or early 15 was when I, yeah, had to be early 15 because now it's been four years. So yeah, early 15 was when I started. I was just like, I'm going to do this. <laughs> it's, it's crazy to me that you, you were so afraid. You went three times before you actually stepped inside and then you were able to, after you said about six or eight months, you started vlogging, which is like, yeah, I still like, sometimes I'm like, I don't want to film myself right now in the gym just cause like, Seriously. Es yeah. especially if there's like a newer person there, I'm always very careful. You know, I want people to feel comfortable. Me too. So how did you go from, I'm afraid to go into this gym to now I'm filming myself in this gym. Like how did that kind of happen? So it was by myself. So back in, in that time, I had expressed interest to the owner of the gym after I'd been there for a while about being a coach because I really wanted to start, you know, learning more about it and all this stuff. And he had given me a key at the time because my schedule was so crazy getting off at six in the morning. Like I wasn't going to go to the CrossFit class at six in the morning after working a 12 hour shift. That was crazy. So what I used to do was sleep from like six in the morning till one or two in the afternoon, but the gym didn't open until four and I had to be at, sh at work at six. So I was like, Hey, you know, is there any way we could work something out where I could go myself? 
tips and I'll just make sure, you know, I'm not doing anything crazy. And he let me at the time. So when I started vlogging, I was super comfortable because it was only me. Like literally there was not one soul in the gym except for me. And I used to like, if I saw a car pull up, I would get so anxious and I like put my camera away. Like I didn't (laughs) want anyone to like make fun of me. (laughs) Yeah. And it's ironic because that is exactly what happened. Like as I got more comfortable and as more people started following me on Instagram throughout this journey and, you know, the grow on YouTube has been really slow, but when it first started and people like I started becoming more comfortable filming myself in front of other people, like it was small at first. I didn't just like whip it out in front of the whole class. And I was like, what's up guys? Uh, but yeah, but I did it like at a We're slow rate. We're still talking rate, about cameras, then- right? <laughs> do you... <laughs> <laughs> I know I said that really like not <laughs> no, I, I'm don't sorry. worry like, I, I feel you <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, anyway. yeah like I was what happened is people started making fun of me and I was like oh my god like this is my worst nightmare I hate this because I, I had heard from other people that they were like talking about me always filming and making fun of me and I was like oh no like this yeah. is what I dreaded that was really hard. And then when I made the decision to change CrossFit gyms, the owner of CrossFit Boynton Beach, where I was for a very long time, the first thing that I said to him, I was like, Hey, I kind of consider myself a YouTuber. Are you okay with me filming? Like I put it right on the table so that he knew that I was going to come in and start filming things. And he was like super cool with it. So that made me feel better once I switched CrossFit gyms and like that whole environment was a lot more supportive. And everybody at that gym was always like, Oh, are we filming today? Like, what are we filming? You know? So that's cool. it, the, the environment. Yeah. That really helped me once I left nothing against my first CrossFit gym. I just don't think that maybe they were used to anybody doing that. And whereas like nowadays it's kind of common, like you see people filming themselves yeah. all the time. So I just felt like it was a more accepted thing when I went to the other gym. That's like so huge, like feeling ex- like not like you're being made fun of every single time you take the camera out. Yeah. Like I know for sure, yeah. like I get that like, oh man, I, not today. Mm-hmm. Not, I, I'm just not there today to want to take the camera out. But like we even have a, so I work out in the morning, pretty much at the same class every morning and our coach. 6.30 a.m. Yeah, 6.30 a.m. And our coach early. follows both of us like on YouTube, watches it, enjoys it, supports it. Yeah. And it's like this, it's 630. Like, it's the same crew every morning. No one's just like randomly yeah. popping in to 630. Yeah. Um, sure. And uh, so there, when it's like a workout that he doesn't really need to do a lot of like one-on-one, like mm-hmm. let me look at you the entire time, he'll just grab my camera and he'll start like getting angles and stuff like while uh, I'm working out, you know? Cool. So it's super Love cool. That. Like they've been like super supportive just this entire time. And so it's super cool. Yeah. And then I think at like at CrossFit gyms, one, it is more like more people film themselves just in general. Obviously most of them that are not with cameras, they'll sure. be with their phone or whatever, like filming right. their lifts, but it's a pretty normal thing to happen. And so I think that people are just kind of more accepting of it because like I, I lit- so I go to 24 hour fitness almost like out oh, four or five times a week now. And I never film there. I just, it's not part of the culture, which is fine, but it's just, with a CrossFit gym, it's definitely more normal, I feel like, you mm-hmm. know? People yeah. don't mind fil- filming their lifts or whatever, so. So, um, you you were talking about, you went to school, you were wanting to be a cop, you decided to change that, and now you're on a completely different trajectory, schooling-wise and everything, <laughs> like, start oh, starting sure, over yeah. again. What, like, how, and you're, you do um, nutrition with Black Iron? Is that what it's called? Black Iron. Yeah. So, yes. what was... What was that like process like deciding you wanted to help out with nutrition, like coaching, like what has that been like? Are you, I know you're still in the middle of schooling and stuff. Yeah, it was, it, it was really unfortunate because <laughs> most of my upper level classes, <laughs> most of my upper level classes uh, from my initial two schools that I went to that were around criminal justice, nothing transferred to my current school with the exception of like my base, like gen ed classes of like, English and yeah. math and like the like one. So it really sucked because I wasn't able to translate anything, uh, hardly anything from that field to this field. So the journey has been quite a while. Um, but I just, I guess for whatever reason back then, I mean, I've always loved to cook. My mom's like hardcore Italian Catholic cook, like every Sunday, fresh pasta sauce on the stove. <laughs> like she was my, my whole child, there was never not a home cooked meal on the table. So like I kind of grew up cooking, Um, which I knew I always liked, but then as I got more into fitness, you know, when you start learning how much of a, um, factor, I guess the nutrition part plays into it is when I was like, okay, I really like this. And then I just 
for whatever reason, fell in love with the nutrition side of things. And back then, I was like helping out a lot of people just for free, like kind of as an experiment. Like I would tell them, Hey, you know, if you want to work with me, you know, I'm, I'm not certified at the time. Um, you know, I was just helping to see how I could help people eat better, not like writing the meal plans or anything, just like giving them macros and what have you. And so that was how I kind of started to learn. And then over the course of like two years, I was doing that alongside with the police department, just like on the side, basically. And I was like helping people with their macros. I had my own nutrition company and I learned from Chrissy. Chrissy was my coach back in the day. And then when she decided to create Black Iron Nutrition, she had reached out to me and she was like, hey, I want you to be a coach for me. And I was like, yes. <laughs> you know, I was like, yes. Yeah. I mean, honestly, yes, school is great. And I have learned a lot of like the scientific side of things, you know, a lot of anatomy and chemistry and all that cool stuff. But when it comes to coaching people, there is like nothing that can replace the true like connection that you build with clients, the experience, the trials and errors and stuff. And so that really helped a ton. And I just fell in love with it. And I just love helping people with their nutrition. I still don't, you know, we don't write meal plans. Um, I'm not a registered dietitian yet. But I'm just certified through precision nutrition. So we just help with macros and kind of like meal timing, things of that nature. It's just really fun. I, I love the company so much. I have, I have two questions coming off of that. Um, the first one is like, who, what would you say your typical client is like? I think a lot of people feel like if you're going to get like food coaching and stuff, you need to be like this, like super CrossFit games athlete. You know what I mean? Like, so what with, with what is your typical client? Like, what are some common like misconceptions or common questions that you like, almost every time you talk to someone have to be like, okay, this is not this, like this is actually the right way, you know? Yes, absolutely. So I would say that my clientele base is actually a pretty decent variety. Um, I do have your like athlete style people who want to compete either in CrossFit or weightlifting. Cause I've done both and I've competed in weightlifting. I think I've done seven meets now over the last five years and I've cut and I've bulked and I've done all that stuff. So I think people, um, kind of late to that. So I have some like weightlifting clients. I have some CrossFit competitive uh, athletes. And then I also have a lot of um, like middle-aged moms. I have some people who are just starting out on their fitness journey for the first time. Maybe they're like a little bit overweight. I have a very small percentage of people who are like uh, severely overweight, like that have maybe a hundred pounds or more to lose. That's probably a small scale thing, but I do have a clients in, I actually have one girl who is so incredible. She's had open heart surgery. Wow. Okay. On her weight loss journey. Yeah. She's lost like 75 pounds the wow. last year with me. And she is just like, no matter, she has so many health problems and she just sends her check in every week. Like nothing's wrong. I mean, so that's a huge difference, you know, from like a weightlifting person to somebody like that who yeah. really is trying to use nutrition like for her health benefit, you know. Let's say there's a, a decent amount. But then, um, what was the question? I forgot the same question. Just like the, the common questions or like misconceptions oh, oh. that you've had to like kind of be like, hey, 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 that's not true or. Yeah, yeah. So it's funny because that was kind of one of the main things that I wanted to address on my channel from the beginning was like the common BS and hmm. myths and shit that you hear. Ooh, can I curse on this? I forgot. Sorry. No, you're good. <laughs> we'll edit it out. You're good. <laughs> the common like misconception. Okay. <laughs> the common uh, crap that you hear on like the social media and the, um, the YouTubes and stuff like that. And so I kind of wanted to be like a voice of, hey, when you watch me, I'm not going to be telling you something because I was paid to say something. Now, like as a disclaimer, obviously I have done like sponsored videos. But I always like, for example, Home Chef, you know, it's like a meal prep company and they send me stuff to try. But like, I always tell the company and my clients, like, I'm not going to post about it if I don't like it. And I'm not going to tell you guys I like it for money. Like I usually don't do payments. It's usually just like, Hey, send me the product to try and I'll tell you what my opinion is. So I felt like the biggest misconceptions that people started having was because they didn't know who to believe really on social media in terms of like supplements. And I know you get this all the time. Mm -hmm. like just the supplements, the fat burning, the, the weight loss tea, the wraps, like all that stuff. You know, I wanted people to be able to come to me and get like the true answers about anything, fitness and health and know that it was an unbiased, 
opinion, no matter what it was. Um, so, I, but I would say the most, like the number one thing that I hear all the time, like almost from like every client that signs up, they're like, I want to lose fat and gain muscle at the same time. And I'm like, <laughs> yes, we all. <are." laughs> so it, it's just kind of like common things that people probably hear from social media um, that they then want to think that they can, you know, like I was telling you earlier, how like they think that they're going to go to a CrossFit gym and look like a CrossFit Games athlete the next day. And it's just like, <laughs> pump the brakes, like mm-hmm. you know, discuss what's on, you know? Yeah. So there's a, lot of, there's a lot of grounding that happens with my coaching. And that was kind of what inspired me to make my, not this most recent, but last week's video was about the myths of muscle building. And I think that's, especially as a woman, you know, girls are always like, I don't want to get bulky. Like, I don't want to lift weights and stuff like that. And so I kind of like sat down, I did like a 30 minute video covering everything about the myths, the common misconceptions about muscle building. Um, it will took really well, which I was excited about. So that's kind of what I've been aiming for my whole journey on YouTube. Nice. Yeah, I, I really liked that video. I watched the whole thing. It was like I almost like watched it like a podcast, right? Just kind of like listen to it and stuff. Um, and it was it's weird because, again, this is this we're in this space. Right. So a lot of the things that you're saying, I'm like, duh. Right. But it's <laughs> it's duh to us. And so I think that's something that I try and always do is to take a step back and try and see the macro view instead of just looking at these micro things that maybe we might focus on, which is good. Like we need to focus on it because we want to learn as much as we can, but you're not going to explain that to a beginner, right? You're going to explain the macro view first, right? You're going to explain calories in, calories out first before you try and dive in a little bit deeper there. And so I think that it's, it's really good to, to take that step back sometimes and really explain everything as big as you can. And then if people want to take that step forward to, to maybe learn a little bit more, that's, that's where it is. But it's, it's really interesting because I think that it's just, it's just really cool with like fitness and all of this stuff. Everyone, everyone's journey is so different and what everyone enjoys is so different. So like people that will follow me will know that I don't enjoy cooking (laughs) and I'm like the laziest, like, Oh, I know. Yeah. I'll eat oatmeal. I mean, I make stir fry almost every night. Like I, Oh, I know. Yep. You've been eating that stir fry for like five years. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) And the chicken he puts in his stir fry is pre-cooked chicken (laughs) that he freezes. I know. Uh, Together. (laughs) Don't judge me. Okay. No, no. Um, But it's like, you you really enjoy doing the cooking you really enjoy doing that stuff and it's like but if you don't want to do that like i think that's fine you know but if you are someone that enjoys doing the cooking it's okay you got the dogs you know they're being they're having fun yeah um hey tux and bailey they're barking at this old lady walking down the street like come on guys really but like if you if you are someone that wants to enjoy cooking and enjoy like watching your stuff is really, I'm sure it's really inspirational and you, it's cool because you're able to maybe try things that someone else wouldn't if that they were just going to try it. But it's like, I tried it and it sucked. So don't do it. Or I tried it. It was really good. So (laughs) this is like something you might like. So I think that's, that's really cool. And then, yeah, like just dealing, it, it probably has to be so like interesting dealing with so many different types of people, helping them with their yeah. journeys. Um, I, I think that that's, that's one of the most fulfilling things in the world is especially like the, the, the more someone has to maybe do, the more weight they might have to lose or the, the further they are on the scale one way, right, to, from health. Mm-hmm. The, the more that like little things that you might say to them, these little fixes, like they mean so much. And I think that's what's oh, really fun, you know, working with people that might have 200 pounds to lose or whatever it might be. It's like you make these small changes and it's like, whoa, I lost 50 pounds. I lost 30 pounds or I feel so much better. Crazy, My knees yeah. don't hurt anymore. It's so it's it's just really cool. So I'm sure that that is something yeah. that is super enjoyable. Now, one thing I kind of wanted I to ask that. about was you were talking about how you do like you help people with macros, but you don't make like uh, diet plans. You don't say this is what you need to eat at 4 p.m. This is what you need to eat. You know, this is I'm curious. So you're going to school to eventually maybe do that if you wanted to. Right. So yeah, that's kind of the goal would be a registered dietitian. But um, I. I I don't know. I, I struggle with it. Like I want to do it, but I also really don't, I, I'm just so against like meal plans, well, you know, so like that's I, where I was going. Having, yeah. So that's kind of, it's funny you bring that up because that's kind of the, the struggle that I've had because 
on some aspects, people are like, oh, like you're not a registered dietitian. But then on the other hand, it's like, yeah, but like, I don't really want to sit down and write you like, okay, here's your diet. You know, this is going to help because and again, like every case is so different, you know, yeah. like I'm not saying this will work for everybody, but if somebody has 200 pounds to lose, if I could help them with the macro side of things, get a more like, uh, you know, well-rounded relationship with food so that they don't feel like all they can eat is just this piece of paper, then for me, that's more rewarding because sure, you could sit there and follow a meal plan and eat a cup of chicken, a cup of rice and whatever lose weight but like what happens when you don't have the meal plan anymore like what what does that do to your relationship with food can you be successful on your own do you know like what's in the food you're eating and so like that's kind of where I would maybe want to take something with a little bit further like to perhaps do some type of registered dietitian but maybe also not so much like a meal plan thing just because I don't I don't necessarily believe in meal plans and I don't write them I mean granted I'm not qualified to do so but I wouldn't even if I was yeah. You know, I just, I want people to be successful because life is not going to be a meal plan. Like you're going to have birthdays and weddings and holidays. And like, what are you going to do? Have a mental breakdown when like, you don't know how to log your, your turkey on Thanksgiving or something like that's just not a life that I want my clients to have. I want it to be realistic and sustainable and flexible, you know? Yeah. And that's, that's exactly where, that's exactly what I feel. Like, I think the most, the most that you can do for a client is to give them the knowledge. Like the most, I would say the most, and I would, I would assume you agree with this is like, especially I would say this is more, more for people that are trying to lose a lot of weight. Like the most you can do for someone there is basically teach them to where they don't need you anymore. You know, like, exactly. exactly. Yeah. It's because if, if, if you're always relying on someone else, it's like you have to learn for yourself. You have to learn for yourself. Yeah. And so that, that's why, like, I think it's, it's great for people to get coaches. And I, I would, I would recommend that, especially like if you, if you have zero knowledge and you really want to learn, I think that it's yeah. great to, to get a coach, like but it's like, somewhere. you're, you're, right. you shouldn't be like, I want to have a coach for a whole year or like, or three years. You know, it's like, I want to have a coach for a few months and your goal should be, I want to learn from this person and, and apply it to myself. Right. That's at least, that's right. at least that's my yeah, that's, that's exactly how I feel. I couldn't agree more. Cause that's what I did with Chrissy. Essentially. I worked with Chrissy and she taught me so much and I did a lot of self practice and practice on other people. And I was like, okay, I can apply this knowledge to myself and then grow from there. And that's what I want my clients to do because that's kind of the biggest issue that I have with these like cookie cutter diets and these people on Instagram that sell these like meal plans and stuff is because they'll sell them to people and they're like, you know, severely under eating, whatever. And they lose all this weight. And then as soon as they're done with their meal plan, they just put the weight right back on and they literally start from square one and they're frustrated. And I'm just like, okay, but if we learn to make this a lifestyle, you don't have to do this, you know, vicious cycle of losing the weight, going on a diet, breaking the diet, gaining the weight. Like we just need to learn how to make it so that you can do this on your own and balance it into your like daily life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's, I love it. And it's like, it's weird because I don't like, I am not fully in the fitness space. Like, um, yeah, I really, tell. I really, <laughs> I really enjoy it. I really enjoy it and it's my hobby, but it's like, um, so I, I only take like little doses at a time. And so for me, yeah. like, like macro counting and balance and learning how to cook for yourself or like, that's like my normal. Mm -hmm. And so I forget that there are other pages and channels and directions where they're like do this meal plan do you know and it's like but it, they're selling fat the fat burning meal plan of the century yeah you know? yeah and it's like i don't know i <laughs> for almost like i've found i don't know like in almost so many things like in almost everything like take if you take the moderate approach, like don't be so far over here and don't be so far over here, but like just kind of see like, oh, there's benefits over here and there's benefits over here and I'm right here in the middle and kind of going like, you're going to be fine. Yeah. You're going to be great. Like, but we've talked about this before. Like the extreme is what sells. Yep. It's moderate never sells. Well, exactly. And, and that's kind of why, and I've said this to you before when we've talked about YouTube growth and stuff is that's really, in my opinion, the reason why I have had such a slow growth over the last four or five years because I am not deadlifting 600 pounds. I'm not like, you know, I'm not 
taking a ton of steroids and super lean all the time. And like my program made me like this, you know, like people want that because they want to do the program that's going to make them look like that person. And it's like, does it really know? Like, do we know what they're taking? And like, I know we kind of discussed that before too. Like that's a whole nother can of worms that people just like forget in anything like same, like, and I mentioned that on my muscle building video, not just with CrossFit and like bodybuilding, but anything like high level athletes, the NFL and the MLB, like they deal with steroid problems all the time. And it's like, are you looking at somebody on Instagram who may or may not be taking a plethora of PEDs and or yeah. steroids and saying like, yeah. I want to look like them by their, by their program. And then you're discouraged if you don't. And it's like, to us, you know, we're like, wake up, but people don't know. Yeah. And that's cause like you said, that stuff sells that intensity that like all that promising of whatever that stuff sells because people want to believe that it's true. And I think that a lot of that comes down to like expectations from, you know, the consumer, which again, it's like, you can't, I don't like when people completely blame consumers. I think that that's, that's wrong because there are marketing tactics, tactics to trick people. Right. Like I recently, I made a video about, um, built bars, which is like a regular, you see that. So they're a regular protein bar company. Okay. So I'm going to go on a little rant here, but just bear with me. Okay. It's, it's going to tie into (laughs) this. I'm ready. So built bar. They're a regular protein bar company, but a lot of their influencer marketing they use is with fat loss influencers, okay? So these fat loss influencers have people that are following them that are trying to lose fat. And so they've, they've amassed a pretty big following of people that are trying to lose weight. And they apparently the bars are really good from what I've heard. The original ones, they taste great. I'm sure they are. I'm yeah. sure they're great. I've never had one. Um, but... They recently released a bar called the Built Burner Bar that they're marketing as a fat loss bar. Literally part of their marketing, it's something like eat one bar. I like screenshotted some of the the pictures that they put on their website. So I'm going to look it up real quick. So it's, it's like eat one bar and – okay, so here it goes. One bar per day, five hours of increased fat burning. <laughs> Wow. Three hours. Okay. Of, you got it down to the hours. Yes. Yeah. Three hours of appetite, appetite reduction, which it's like, <laughs> so, so there's like, yeah. Cause you ate something. So you're not yeah. going to be hungry for three hours. Like, <laughs> like, you want to know what my right, favorite right. appetite like, suppressant is? Measuring that? Yeah. Which, pizza is my favorite. <laughs> pizza is a great <laughs> appetite suppressant. <laughs> and then it says one full serving of weight loss for you. So that's one bar per day. And then it says two bars okay. per day. So they're, they're marketing as like, you oh. need to eat two. 10 hours of increased fat burning, eight Ah. hours of appetite suppression or reduction, and two full servings of weight loss formula. But what it says right above that is what made me, so I was like, are you kidding me? It says, eat two bars per day and lose weight faster. And and then they say like the key ingredients and they have Garcinia, Cambogia, you know, all the stuff that they have in fat burners, green tea extract and stuff. And it's like, that is so wrong to me because again, Yes, you can make the argument if you're someone that's like completely capitalism rules, right? Everything, everything's, it's the consumer's fault, right? You should have done your research. And uh, to a point, I do agree, right? Like you shouldn't be getting tricked by that. But that whole marketing thing was designed to get people that are trying to lose weight. And that is my issue. And I'm, I'm just sick of these companies that are trying, that are basically lying, right? Because you Absolutely. obviously you can make the argument like, oh, well, green tea extract, like all this stuff does, it might give you a little bit more energy, might make your heart rate a little bit faster. And so in turn, you're moving around more. So you are burning more calories. But it's like this isn't right. targeting fat in your body and burning it away because you're eating two bars. No, and so it's it's so it's so frustrating because, again, the argument against it is, well, they should have known better. And it's like, yeah, but when you're starting, when you, if you're one of these people that's starting from scratch – and you see that and like your favorite fat loss no, influencer no. has been promoting these built bars and now they release this right. new one that's for weight loss. It's like, oh, well, it's great. And it's right. I get so mad. And then to tie it into what we were talking about, because I think the steroid thing is, is very interesting, especially like in the CrossFit space, but just in in, yeah. in social media in general. Right. Fitness, social media. For sure. It's I the, the thing that bothers me and that I am so against is. The people that are on performance enhancing drugs or on steroids and they start selling programs that they say they do and those are the results that they're getting. 
That's that wrong is my me. biggest pet peeve. It drives me insane mm-hmm. because you know, and the thing is, is like, I don't care if you want to take PEDs and steroids. I, I literally, I, I don't have nothing against it. You want to do that. That's fine. That's why I, well, not that I can compete weightlifting right now because my hand, but whatever, prior to breaking my hand, <laughs> when I competed, I competed in a tested federation. So yeah. they can pop me at any time. And we're all like, we have on the same level now, whether or not people cheat and cycle on or off, whatever, that's beside the point. But the thing is that those people, those types of people that sell the programs are not really fully disclosing all the other stuff that are, do, that are going into that. And it's really, in my opinion, it's false advertising, just like the bar, because those people are not just doing only their program. Like I guarantee you, they have two to three sessions a day. Their eating is on point, whether they want to act like on Instagram, it's not, you know, like the people who are like, Oh, look at me eating all this junk food, but they're like 3% body fat and like mm-hmm. never have been like any kind of chunky ever, <laughs> you know? And so like you have that and it's like, okay, you're really doing three sets of 10 deadlifts and then like two other accessory movements and you look like that. But like, we know that, right? But like you said, the person that's starting their fitness journey has no idea. And granted, with a grain of salt, we don't really know for sure who's on steroids unless we know, you know, the yeah. same to all those people. But, you know, like that's a very common thing that happens is like, are they probably taking a performance enhancing supplement or drug <laughs> and then also selling, their, you know, like also selling their program? Sure, they might do their deadlift, but they're also doing this stuff over here they're not telling you about. So it's like, that kind of stuff drives me insane, but that's what people like. And that's why they have such big followings. So I'm just like, why? yeah, it's, why? it's the, um, so I'm, I recently started, uh, watching a, a YouTube channel. It's called shredded sports science. And, um, it's, it's by this guy that has a lot of information about all this stuff. He's a very smart guy, right? I actually recommend if you guys are listening to this, check it out. Shredded sports science. It's really good. Um, but he, he's a pretty funny guy, but he talks about how it's the beginner trap. So the, um, the, most of the money in the fitness industry that is made is by beginners because they get tricked by, by people that are, you know, on steroids or built bar burner booty blast 4,000 bars or whatever. <laughs> the like, booty that's my, that was, favorite. That's my favorite one, <laughs> <laughs> but it's yeah. like, the people, the, the yeah. people like it, think about it. It's with anything, right? If you go into a GNC and like, for me, if I go into a GNC, I'm going to be like, I know that I want, this is the protein powder that I came for. And they were going to try and sell me right. all this stuff. And I'm like, no, I don't want anything else. But if I was, this happened to me, right? I remember the first time I ever started going yeah. to the gym, uh, I went to a 24 hour fitness. I actually ended up working there, but oh man, I, I kind of want to tell that story because they ended up, they ended up when I worked there, they wanted me to sell supplements because I worked at the front desk and they like basically said like, you know, you've lost a lot of weight kind of like you know? And I was like, nah, I ain't doing that. But like, hasn't every supplement company that's reached out to you, not everyone, but a lot of them been like, Hey, like say that you lost weight, you know, using this thing. Yeah. Seriously. But I mean, it's never, I'm never going to do yeah, that. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah. But right. so when right. I first went to this 24 hour fitness, this is before, this was like, this was before I actually lost my weight. Like I tried for a little bit and then left. Um, I like, I bought like a fat burner. I bought like protein powder, like all this stuff that I just didn't need, especially when you're first starting out. So it's like yeah. that I fell into that trap. Like when you go into these stores or, you know, you buy from these influencers, if you are a beginner, it's so much easier to be tricked. And so that's why Absolutely. like for me, most of my videos are targeted to that group of people, beginners, because if and you're not a beginner that. anymore, you, you're fine. Like you're most likely haven't, you're done being tricked by these people, right? Like you understand, right. like, I don't, and you're not looking on YouTube for videos on how to gain muscle. Exactly. You, know? you understand. Yeah. I just need to go to the gym for a few years. <laughs> like yeah. I need to grip my teeth. and like, <laughs> it's going to take a while. I'm not going to do a six, six week program or even a six month program and like become Seriously. rich froning. Right. Like yeah. it's, I, like, <laughs> and so, the, but like that whole point about like what he was saying is like, it's so true. Like, the, the amount of money that's made on YouTube is, or on just like in the fitness industry is by beginners. And it's kind of what we were saying. And so with, with the steroids thing, it's, it's like you said, it's hard to and say who's on, who's not. And I don't ever, I'm never sitting here trying to decide no, who is, um, but it's no. like use, use discretion, right? Try so, and be smart. Absolutely. That uh, was what you said about the, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was just going to say, just I agree with you because that exact same thing will, will happen to me as well. Because 
I didn't even know anything about steroids or PEDs at all when I first started. Like, I just thought those people, and again, not saying who, who, but you know what I mean? I thought that so-and-so really just looked like that by their six-week program. I really thought that until I got into a more competitive environment and I learned like, oh my God, there's so many people who are taking like even the most mild form of PEDs, like, and they're not even at the game. So if that just goes to show you anything, like, People who aren't even like who are just Instagram models are taking like, you know, the base level stuff. Imagine the highest level and not saying everybody, but just to an extent, like you have to think I was like shocked when I learned about like that whole world. I was like, oh, my gosh, like people actually do this. Like, And then I was like, wow, I was so dumb. I thought I could actually look like so and so. But, you know, so, so you're literally talking about the revelation I'm in the middle of right so, now. <laughs> so it's funny that you bring that up. Sean, you can tell the story. Yeah. But he was watching a video right before we started this podcast. Yeah, I was watching, like, so you, when you are, so we talked about this on an earlier podcast, but like proximity to extremes normalizes it. So like if you're next to someone who it just looks like the most extreme version of it, you start to think that's normal. You start to think everyone's like that when in reality, yeah. when in reality they're not. So, um, what, you start CrossFit, um, you start following all the CrossFitters, everyone you see at the games, and then you go, oh, I guess that's the standard, that's the normal. And hey, then, and hey. so today, Dave Castro posts a picture, and it's like five CrossFitters, girls, okay? And for some reason, it just like clicked in my brain, and I was just like, I don't know. Like, that's, like, I don't, like, something just seemed like, that's interesting. And so I'm like on this Google search of like CrossFit or steroids in CrossFit, common steroids found in CrossFit and like reading these articles by these doctors and this like this one podcast I listened to was this doctor and he's like, I'm writing, he's like, I'm not going to say who, but I'm writing their prescriptions. I'm that giving them their drugs. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> yes. He's like, I just learned this too. Like he was like, he's like, I promise you. 97%, 99.7. He's like, I'm the guy giving it to them. He's like, I'm not going to say who, but I promise you. And I was just like, yeah, like just like so, mind blown. Uh, and it's just, it's insane. Mm -hmm. And he started saying like, here's what you want to look for. Like, here's what you'll see. Here's what you want to look for. And it was like, he, he was like, the actual, like, thing. like he gave you like examples, like of what specific muscle groups and like how you'll ah. s like, you know, he's like, he's like, look at the deltoids, look at the traps, look at the abs, you know, like if they have a, if they have a turtle shell with no V, you know, like stuff like that, where it's just like, Oh man, like, okay. But again, I don't, he might've just been like exaggerating for effect, but still it was just like, I 100% was like, well, they said they're not. So they're not mm -hmm. like c case closed. Exactly, exactly. Well, there is, um, in, in West Palm Beach, where I used to live in Florida, there was a girl very similar, and I can talk about this because it was like on the, the chalk up, you know, like she had actually gotten busted for these steroids. And so, and I didn't know, obviously, and she was on a team of one of my good friends, and we had very similar body stature, exactly like you said. She imagined me, but like super duper jacked and like, very, very thin skin and veiny. And like, she was my height, exactly my weight. And so I used to always compare myself to her. Cause I was like, man, okay. And she looks like this, like it's gotta be something I'm doing wrong. Like I can, you know, I have been training for longer than me, but I could do this. And I could probably look like that. Cause you're around these people, you're around these regional level athletes and you think that that's normal. Well, so I had always kind of used her as my like inspiration, you know? And then this past season, she actually got revoked like everything was taken away from her from CrossFit because she got caught with steroids and I was like oh my god yeah. I was so mad because I'm like I here I am like trying to compare myself you know and being like okay I can look like that and it's like okay but no you can't I mean you know genetics play a little bit of a role like I don't know if you've seen my boyfriend he looks like a genetic freak of nature like uh -huh. he always has an eight pack and eats like trash yeah so like gosh, that was caught my phone but like you know he always looks really really He's never taken steroids, but like I look at those people who then get busted and I'm like, well, come on. Okay. All right. Yeah. Now I feel better about myself, you know? And like, it's like you, I know it's so easy to say, don't compare yourself to people, but we all do it. We right. all do it. We all do it. Yeah. And so I would almost feel like I was 
unable or I shouldn't post fitness pictures or fitness videos because I don't look like the, these people. So who am I to say that I could know anything or, or post a fitness picture because I don't look like that person, which means I'm not as dedicated or I'm not as disciplined as that person. But it's like, that's right. Like you start to doubt yourself. Exactly. And then that's like, that's the day. And we all know it, but like the danger of comparison is like you're comparing your 10% or your, you know, 90% because you're comparing all you are to the 10% they're showing on Instagram. Yes. And, and you're like, I, that's what I literally said in my video. Yeah. It's just, it's insane. And it's like, literally, I, I kind of feel dumb because I'm like three years into this and now I'm finally <laughs> like, Oh, Oh, but now that it has happened, it's like you do there. You can see that and do nothing about it. Or you can be like, no, I want to like, help people i want to let pe- people Absolutely. know you know and i think that's kind of like where and my mind where my mind is right now is, yeah yeah that's what i was just gonna say and it's tricky because you don't want to like that was what i was afraid of with my muscle building video because i didn't want to be like well so-and-so's on steroids so you can't use their program you know like i yeah. didn't want to feel like attacking people because i personally don't care who takes steroids but then again you know like we said we're on the more like advanced side of the fitness world we've been around for a while so like I know I am buying so-and-so six-week program because they look like that you know so like for me I don't care if they take steroids doesn't bother me but like I have a hard time talking about it with people for two reasons one because I don't want people to think I'm like accusing a certain person so like I usually tend to reference people who have been popped for steroids before just so it's like a definitive like hey this person like what I was just saying this girl was busted and she can't compete for four years or whatever the, the sanction is so like I use that, but then also like people have done the same thing to me. Like people literally were like, Oh, you're, you're on steroids. Like they used to comment on my Instagram, stuff like that. And I'm just like, do you know what somebody that's on steroids looks like? Like, like, what are you saying? You know? So it's kind of like a touchy subject for me because like, it's just like a gray area. Like you don't want to seem like you're accusing people, but then also coming from the other side of it, I was like, so, so mad when people said that to me. I, and of course they're anonymous. And I was like, Oh yeah. I was like, okay, come off anonymous right now and pay for my, uh, blood work at LabCorp. I'll do, go do it right now. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'll do yeah. it. I'll yeah. Do it. Never, but. yeah. Yeah. The steroid stuff is weird. Cause it's like, for me again, I, I think we're all in the same boat where it's like, I don't really care. Like, especially with right. like when it's a high level athlete in any sport, it's, it's, I've gotten to a point and this is just my own personal journey. I'm not saying anyone else should feel this way, but I've gotten to a point where it's like, I don't, I don't even really think about it. First of all, like I don't, I'm not sitting there like, Oh, that's a steroid, steroid. but it's like, I just assume everyone's on it. So it's like the the playing, (laughs) but I I, I didn't, that's not, that's why I think that's why I feel the need now to be like, like, and I don't want to be the guy who's like, everyone's on steroids. Yeah, You don't need to be that guy. (laughs) Like, Like I believe strongly in like stay in your lane, but like if someone else is staying in their lane, but that lane is like, Hey, I'm doing steroids, but not letting anyone know. It's like, I feel like I want to like, get that lane out of the yeah. way, which there's a problem because <laughs> then you don't want to be like accusatory and you don't want to be like, right. you don't want to be known as the guy who's against everything, mm-hmm. you know? And exactly. so it's like, it's that weird exactly. balance. And so like, yeah, for me, it's, well, one, we've, we've had so many amazing games athletes on the podcast, yeah. right? So for me to think all of them are on steroids and they're all lying no, to yeah. us. One, they've never said anything to us about it. We don't, yeah. I don't, I don't right. ask about it because it's like, I don't care really, you know? So for exactly. me, it's like, you know, I said, I assume everyone's on it, but it, like I said, it's not like I'm thinking they're a bad person. If, even if they are on it, it's like, that's just, that's just the nature of the beast, you know? And so, yeah, I just, exactly. I guess, yeah. So it's like, I understand like for me, it doesn't bother me if they're asked by someone, do you just start and they say no? Because it's like, come on, man. Like, <laughs> but it's like, okay, throwing away my whole career. Yeah. Let me do that right now. Yeah, That's yeah. why I think uh, right, like yeah. they're going to, yeah. Uh, you're the first person you asked. <laughs> you got me. Yes, you, I you, am. You yeah. got me in the corner. <laughs> exactly. So it's like, that's why yeah. I think strong man is awesome. Cause they don't test and it's just like, fine. You know yeah. what I mean? Like that's, and there's why, a there's a place not? for it. It's exactly. cool to see someone squat a thousand pounds Absolutely. or like, and it's like, Nobody, you know, there's those people that are against steroids. They're like, oh, it's just because of steroids. But most people are like, I don't care how, I don't care how much steroids I took. That ain't ever happening for yeah. me. Sorry. Right, yeah. exactly. I'm not built like that. You know what I mean? I'm not built to be, like, right. there's a picture of Half Thor, right? The mountain from Game of Thrones. Yeah. Recently, he's like 400 pounds. He has freaking abs. 
400 pounds. Like, that is cool to see. Yeah. And so, like, he's on steroids for sure, right? Uh-huh. I'm sure he – I think he's even talked about it. I don't care. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it doesn't bother me. And right, it, right. for me, it's the exactly. same – I feel the same way about games athletes. One, I'm the – like, w- if we have more – I hope we, I hope we have more on the podcast. I'm not going to sit here and be like, so uh, – Steroids, huh? <laughs> like I don't. Let's talk gonna, about the elephant yeah, in the room. I'm not gonna here. bring it up because I just that's not something that interests me because it's not my job to be Detective John. But, you know. But don't you think to play devil's advocate? Okay. Don't you think with strongman they say like they don't test? It's not a thing. Mm-hmm. The games does test. Yeah. And they're able to like cycle off or like you know what I mean like. Yeah. Don't you think there's a little bit of a difference where you're saying I'm competing in a drug-free sport? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's a difference, like, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I guess to me it just doesn't I, – I'm not bothered because, like, I think – that's Well, not, because you're not comparing yourself to a game exactly yeah, that's true. is the point. Yeah. That, yeah. that kind of goes back to what we were saying. The people that are just starting, myself included and, – and I'm not saying Christmas Abbott. I don't know if she is or not. I yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying I – I was comparing myself to her saying like, oh, I can look like that. Where the people that say they think they can look like so-and-so, but they don't know. And so I think it doesn't bother people like us because we know like at this point, you know, what our genetic potential is. John I knows know. now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, yeah I'm, you know. I'm part of the crew now. <laughs> but like, yeah, so again, it, it goes yeah. to the expectations, right? Like my, when people are like, do you ever think you're going to go to the games? I just laugh. I'm like, it's never going to happen. Literally Not because never. I don't work hard and <laughs> yeah. I don't believe in myself, but it's like, one, I even even without steroids, I know how much work it takes. How your three workouts a day, you know what I mean? Like, unbelievable! Like all of your focus is going into your whole that. life. Yeah, I make yeah. I make YouTube videos. I make podcasts. I have other things that I'm focused on, and I I don't want to put that much effort into it. It just doesn't interest right. me. And then on top of that, if we're talking about steroids, it's like I. I've so I've I've talked about it. People have asked me like one. I've been people have asked if I've done steroids, and I'm like, well, thank you very much. <laughs> but yeah. no. Hey, um, but it's like those games, bro. <laughs> people, but people have like tried. Like I've had legit conversations. Like, well, why not? Like you don't compete. You're not. You know what I mean. That's not your goal. One, I think a big part of it is like I would feel bad. Like if I were to take them and not say anything, sure. right? Because then my body's gonna change. People like, wow, that's insane. Yeah. But it's before that. My main thought is my long term health, mm-hmm. and so like that's what this podcast is mainly about, right? Like we care about long term health. That's Absolutely. what we want people to have, and that's what I want to have. And steroids yeah. does a lot to your body. Yeah. You know, and it's just to me, I have no, like I have made such insane progress. Yes. From without, without ever taking any steroids, it's not written. it's not worth throwing it away. Yeah, it's like why okay. would I to get you know for five years be at this huge peak level that maybe I would have never reached without it? But it's like you know if we're looking at a graph, it's going to go whoosh, this huge peak and then wham right back down. Right. When right. I could exactly. just take those small gains for my whole life, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And then it goes straight yeah. down because I die. But you know whatever, <laughs> yeah. that's fine. Um, like that's my thought about it. But again, like yeah. when I look at these athletes that are doing amazing things, I'm like, again, it's just the nature of the beast. So I don't, yeah. it doesn't like when people say like, Oh, it's so messed up that they're saying they don't. I'm like, well, it's like their job to say they don't, yeah. you can't expect them to say I've done this. Yeah. They're um, going to respond to the troll on Instagram and be like, yeah, you got me. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Like, like, no. and then there's the, there's always the issue of when people, when people are caught, and instead of just being like, hey, you know, <laughs> yeah, I made a mistake. They say it was in this. It was in that. That's what I'm like. It was in my pre-workout. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's, the, that's the most popular one, It's always one, pre-workout, right? yeah. Um, that's where I'm just like. Just own it. Come on, man. Just own it and be like, if you want to be like, because I remember when Ricky Garrard got popped. Again, he said, oh, I don't know how it happened. But then he was saying, you'd be surprised at how many people did. It's like, I'd rather see that than just be like. I no, I don't have no idea. Yeah. I'm gonna right. I'm gonna fight this and uh it's like, come on. That's that's right. where it's just like, come on, you got caught and let's be real here. I don't yeah. know. That's kind of my You thoughts. know that, that little YouTube video that's like, Why the you lie? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's literally me that every time they say something like that. Like and it's caused me to unfollow a lot of people, like for that reason. Like exactly what you said. You wanna take it and you don't say anything about it and you're not selling anything and you're doing your own thing, that's fine. It doesn't affect me at all. But the minute that you get caught for steroids and you're like, oh, I've heard the most ridiculous excuses, like the craziest things you're just like, what? Like that? No. (laughs) You know, so like you hear that and you're just like, 
okay, you did it. So like, just say, yeah, I did it. I'm sorry. I move on because then you look like an idiot when you're all like, Oh, it was in my meat. It was in my meat that I bought from the grocery store. Like, okay, yeah. sure. Let me get some meat because where'd you buy that? At? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or like there was the one where she, who was it? Emily, Emily Abbott. Abbott said like her boyfriend was taken and she kissed him. And no, that's she, how, I was just like, Oh my think, gosh. Yeah. Yes. Then you're yeah. just like, no, why would you say that? Yeah. 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 Okay. So <laughs> kind of, kind of a random on the topic we're talking about, but okay. just for the fun of it, you said when you started doing CrossFit, Christmas Abbott was your like ideal, like you held her up as like, oh wow, that person's great. That'd be awesome. Yeah. What was yours? Did you have like an ideal person where you're like, if I can get my body to look like that person, I'll be stoked? <laughs> well, no. <laughs> and I got loose skin, so I'm not going to do it. <laughs> like, so I'm going to be like, oh, look like Rich Froning. Oh, yeah. This loose skin will fill out real but you know good. What I mean? like, was there like, a, like an, <laughs> was there a CrossFit inspo? Um, I would say it was Matt Frazier when I first started. Okay. Like, because when I first, I mean, it still is. Yeah. Like, I think he's awesome. Um, when I first started, it was the first year that he, it was the second year he won the games, I think. No, it was the, it was it was the, the first year. First year. We no, like, no, no. By the, when we started, Ben Smith was the champ. And when then you started. When I started. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I started right oh, okay. after the games. Yeah. So. I'm pretty sure that that's what happened. So, yeah, he was like my person. I still, I still really like his, you know, just like work hard kind uh -huh. of thing. So um, mine is, <laughs> I used to want to look like oh Sam Dancer, and there is not a <laughs> chance ever. Like I'm not tall like him. I'm not like I don't have long I don't, legs I don't like him. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know how tall he is. He looks. Look he, yeah, he he seems yeah, pretty tall. Yeah, I, I mean, I've, I've met him at Wadapalooza, and he was like definitely towering over me. I mean, that's not to be saying, fair. Yeah, too, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Most people are towering over you. Yeah. But, but yeah, uh, like explain what Sam Dancer looks like to people that might not know. Okay, so Sam Dancer so is five ten. Five ten. Two twenty five. Oh dang. Okay, five so ten for a he's, crossfitter is tall. <laughs> he's half an inch taller than me. <laughs> yeah. Um, but basically, Sam Dancer is legs. Two hundred twenty five pounds. Yeah. Okay. Two hundred twenty five so pounds. Yeah. And Jean, you weigh I, uh, about. I was like, yeah, yeah. I was like one ninety nine yeah. today or something. So 25 pounds, and that's like mostly muscle. Of muscle. You have to put on. 25 pounds of muscle. In your legs. Though. In my <laughs> legs. In legs only, yeah. yeah. And so, like, I would like buy five inch inseam shorts and like have them like super tight around my quads because, like, that's, that's what happens when Sam Dancer's squatting. Uh -huh. is his shorts are super tight around his quads. It, that one was ridiculous. So he'd buy the booty Fleo shorts. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would actually yes. buy the Simply Mander Fleo booty shorts. Yeah. They look really good on me. I better see. Oh, see, oh, I told you yes. about that. Ja <laughs> yeah, we, we got that on the podcast this time, yeah. too. Yeah. That was great. That was like a nice play out. <laughs> it's my study music. Oh, nice. I like um, electronic chill. That's my go-to. Uh -huh. Like just like ambient beats. Mm -hmm. So I had a, I had a question that I thought I'm not sure if you want to answer, um, but one thing that me and you have like talked about in like the, the behind the scenes, you know, just as friends, is like social media and like mental health, right? So uh, yeah, I was just curious, like what, how has social media kind of maybe like, I don't want to say affected it, but. You know, ha have you seen any, I would say, I would love to hear some positives and negatives. I don't want to make it all negatives, but like sure. with social media being an, I hate the word influencer, but you know. I know, I hate that word so much. Me too, but <laughs> like being in that space and having so many eyes on you, like how has that, how has that been for you? And. Oh gosh, here we go. No, no, I want to add on to it. You've decided to be ridiculously open. Yeah. About everything. Yes. So like the decision yes. behind that, because. I know that can't be easy. Yeah. Um, so I have been in and out of therapy since I was a little kid. Like my mom put me in child therapy because I showed signs of anxiety, depression issues as a young girl. And um, theater definitely helped with that. And I think kind of that is why YouTube was initially a help because I felt like I could be myself and I wasn't like putting on a show for people. And I felt like there was people that I was helping. And so in the smaller stages of my YouTube and Instagram growth, fame, whatever you want to call it, not really famous, but you get my point when yeah. it was smaller, 
I felt like my mental health was better. And then there was a time period where, and you know, like you and I at this point were very close. Um, I was in a super, super toxic relationship. Like I can't even remember, like I called you like hysterically mm-hmm. crying on the side of the road, like just needing you to talk to me. Cause I was like, I don't know what to do. And like that point was really weird for me because I was loving CrossFit so much and loving vlogging and loving that side of my life. But like behind closed doors, Whoa. Okay. Hold on. Wait. (laughs) Whoa. Did not expect to get emotional about that. Um, Mm -hmm. behind closed doors, I was like super unhappy and very like, just, I mean, my life was not what it was on social media. And so I almost like felt like a fraud kind of, because I was like, man, I am really struggling. Like the depths of anxiety and depression. I was so unhappy. I was emotionally abused in my relationship. So much horrible, horrible things happened in that relationship. And here I am on Instagram, like cooking meals and trying to like be somebody else's inspiration. And I felt like I couldn't really talk about it because I didn't want people to think that I was being like, um, like attention seeking because I had been such a positive influence for people that I didn't want people to start like thinking they had to suddenly feel bad for me or whatever. So I didn't really talk about it. And then it was only until recently when I moved from Florida to Iowa to be with my now current boyfriend that I realized the the toll of the split life, how much that had on me. And so then I just decided to be open about it. And I mean, granted, nobody's perfect. Like I'm not saying that my relationship is perfect, but it is very healthy. And Austin is like my biggest support system. And he's involved with everything that I do on my social media and Instagram. And so my life is kind of like full, you know, like it's fully complete at this point. And I don't feel like I'm hiding one side of me. And so I was like, okay, well, if I'm going to be honest, like I'm going to start talking about the struggles that I had with anxiety and going to therapy and choosing to go back up again. And I was super nervous to post about it because of the exact same reason. I already have people that hate me. They follow me and they hate me and they talk about me and they make fun of me. And that is horrible for my mental health because I feel like from my side of things, like I don't do anything that warrants that kind of hate. Like it's like hateful hate. Like they make fun of the way I look. Like when I was in bulking, they were making fun of my weight gain, like just things that are just so mean for no reason you know like I I don't have any like scandals I'm not like selling anything to be a you know what I'm saying like nothing that I felt warranted that type of hate and so I was like great if I open up about this I'm just gonna feed them even more and I'm gonna look like an idiot and so I was really scared and then I did it anyway because I was like this is real like this really is and I almost wish that back then I would have been more honest about what I was going through And so then I decided that I'm going to now and I feel like from the feedback that I've gotten and granted, I don't know what's being said behind my back now, but to my face anyway, the feedback has been like really, really good because I think people have a negative stigma about therapy and talking to someone, you know, especially just like, they're like, oh, she's going to therapy. And it's like, I think a lot of people could benefit from therapy and learning how to deal with anxieties or depression or anything that traumatic that they've been through. So like now I'm kind of trying to just be more of a real life advocate for it and kind of trying to like desensitize people to the whole therapy stigma because it is a big part of my life and I want to like share that because it's real. So it's okay now, but it definitely was not, it has not been okay in the past for sure. So I know that that was like a big switch, (laughs) but I, I, I felt like I, one, I wanted to give you a chance to talk about that because I think it's, I think it's important one. And two, I think that it's, it's good to talk about those, like those things. And I wanted people to know that side of you that might be listening to the podcast and maybe don't follow you because you know, it's like, it's all fun and games and stuff like that. But I think, especially when it comes to like social media, there's a lot of good, but there can be a lot of bad. And like what you said, it's really dangerous when you're putting on a front. Um, I've noticed this for myself and like, I've, I've, I've done more to be more myself. Like a lot of the a lot of people like the new videos I'm doing where I'm kind of calling stuff out or like being more real. Um, but there are some people, there are some people that don't like it. They're like, man, I miss the videos where you just, you know, worked out and you were happy. It's like, yeah, but a lot of those weren't the most real as as to who I was. And so like, for me, 
it's been really therapeutic sharing these videos and sharing my actual opinions and being like, yo, this is what I actually think about this stuff. Um, and a lot of it might, might be a little divisive, but because I'm no, no longer putting this mask on, because no matter what, if you have a mask on or not, people aren't going to like you. So it's hard when you put on this mask and you're like, oh, I'm trying to be this person that everyone's going to like, but then you're still getting people mad at you. So you're, you have people that don't like you, but they don't even like the real you. So now you can't even be the real you because you're afraid of, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, for me, it's yes. been super helpful. It's just like, I'm going to be me, the real me. Exactly. And if people don't like that, then whatever, I'm not going to change it. It's better than I'm being this fake person and people still don't like me. So it's like, what, what do mm -hmm. I even do? You know? Why would you, yeah, what's the point of that? Exactly. I totally understand that. And also kind of like, you know, from what you're saying, like when we are making videos or making content or when, when we are trying to present a person, not because it's who we are, but because we're trying to get the people who don't like us to like us, like that just becomes like this, just, it's, you're never going to win. Yeah. Never. And you, you told me that, like, we've had conversations mm -hmm. about this because I think one of the, one of the things that I struggle with the most really was not the people that just didn't like me for me. Because like you said, if you don't like me for me, then that's okay. Like, I'm not going to be somebody fake. But what really I think drove me into like such like I was ready to just delete everything when I was reading some of the things about myself because the things that bothered me the most were the things that weren't true mm -hmm. like the steroid accusations um just things like about my personal life that like these anonymous people claim to know which they didn't like it was complete lies and I'm reading this and I'm like but that's not true and like I felt so like helpless because I'm like that, that's not the person that I want people to know because that's not real. So then I, when I like, you know, what got out of that relationship was, was literally the best thing I ever did in my entire life. Like once I was done with that, I felt like I was able to really be myself. And then once that happened and like, I'm with somebody who actually loves me for who I am, then I was like, okay, well, if they don't like me for that, then like, what am I going to do? Like, they're going to hate me no matter what. Like you said, if you fake it or not. So like now at least I'm able to be true to myself and it's better. But I think it took that, like doing that, like you said, putting that mask on because I was putting a mask on in my relationship too. Like I was literally two different people because he did not support the YouTube. Um, he didn't support anything fitness wise. Like he controlled every aspect of that, of my life in that sense. And so like I had to be somebody so different yeah. behind closed doors. And then I'm like, fun manders on YouTube and in real life, but then like, who am I at home? And that was the worst thing for oh my, my mental gosh. health. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's tough. Like nobody can, I, I feel like nobody can really live a double life for a very long time. You know, no. unless you're some sort of like CIA spy or something like that. Sure <laughs> I'm sure that they probably have Fair to, life. they yeah. probably hey. have to go to the ther therapy sessions too. She so. was a cop. That's as true. far as we know, <laughs> she might have been She's a CIA She's undercover sp right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, dude. You yeah. figured her out. Yeah. Now she has to leave. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, that was a really good conversation. I had a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, thanks so, guys. so is there, you know, for some people that might want to find you, how would they do that? Simply Mander <laughs> on uh, YouTube. I, it's funny. I like people who ever call me Amanda. I'm always like, hmm? yeah, like, yeah. I, don't, I never, like I never hear my full name anymore, but it is um, Simply Mander on Instagram and YouTube and Twitter too. I'm not too active on Twitter, but now what, and then. What about, now and then. <laughs> what about Tumblr? <laughs> uh, yeah so oh my gosh i i have a tumblr but i just mostly like use it to reblog my like youtube videos and stuff uh -huh. so it's kind of redundant but i do have a blog blog which is kind of cool simply manner.com or wordpress i thought uh, every literally it's just simply manner <laughs> like yeah, yeah. i don't have different names and do you me. have a do you have a tiktok <laughs> <laughs> no, but I kind of want to make one. I uh, oh, I downloaded I downloaded the app last night, and I I deleted he was it like, this morning. He was sitting on the stairs, just like no, I was on a, I was on a seat on a seat. Yeah. Oh, and like for like hours. No, it was, <laughs> it was like forty five minutes. It was a long time TikTok. of like literally just like mm -hmm. scrolling through, yeah. and then just like Maybe a little a little laugh. <laughs> Yeah. Like, yeah. So I, I deleted it this morning. I was like, yep, don't need that. that. You're like, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't yeah. need that waste of time in my life. I've, so. I've downloaded and deleted TikTok. 
Oh, you have to? As, as quickly, yeah, yeah. Where it's like, do it, and then you realize that you just spent so much time watching most of it you didn't think was funny or mm-hmm. anything. And then you're like, okay, I'm done. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, thank you so much for being on. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Hey, I'm glad that you don't hate me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do not hate you. <laughs> she kept thinking I hated her because we didn't have her on the podcast sooner. That's the backstory. There. Yeah. But the joke that I keep anytime he texts me, I'll be like, oh, do you hate me today? <laughs> okay, no, good. <laughs> All right. See ya. Bye. Peace. All right, guys. Well, that was a great interview. Uh, Manders had so much to say, and we really just got to dig deep into some topics that are super fun and sometimes super like taboo to talk about. But I feel like we hopefully did a good job of navigating there. If you guys want to continue the conversation with us, my Instagram handle is at Jean Glaude. My brother's is at Obese to Beast or at John Glaude. And um, you can find Simply Mander on Instagram, on YouTube, at Simply Mander. Let us know. Like, let us know if you liked the episode, what you liked about it, certain things you agreed with, disagreed with. And um, be sure, if you haven't, leave us a rating on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcast. Leave a comment on YouTube. You know. You know how it is. But um, thank you guys for listening, and we'll catch you guys next week.